Good, happy Tuesday evening. I'm Riley King, and welcome to your 9 p.m. news and weather. Let's get started. First up, AP Van Otis o o Ostern wins Democratic national nomination for governor. Executive Council Colin Van Otis won the Democratic nomination for governor Tuesday. With 16% of the participants reporting on the Democratic side, Van Ostern had 55% of the vote. Former Portsmouth Mayor Steve Marchand was second with 23%, followed by former Director of Securities Regulations, Mark Connolly with 20%. Connolly congratulated Van Otis on his win in his concession speech. It was unclear who Van Otis would face in November on the Republican side. Manchester Mayor Ted Gastis, Executive Council Chris Nunu, and businessman Frank Edelblut were locked in a tight race, with 18% of the participants reporting Sununu and Gastis had 28% of the votes, followed by 27% for Edelblut. State Senator Jeannie Forster had 15% and con considered the race at about 8%. 45 p.m. AP Ayot wins GOP nomination for Senate. U.S. Senator Kelly Ayot will get a chance to serve a second term in the Senate after she won the Republican nomination Tuesday. The win sets up a matchup with Democratic Governor Maggie Hassan in November. The race is already shaping up to be one of the most expensive in New Hampshire history. The Associated Press called the race for a soon as polls closed at 8 p.m., with 25% of the participants reporting. Ayotte led challenger Jim Rubin 79 to 17%. Tight race between Ginta, Ashu, and 1st District. Early returns showed a tight race for the Republican nomination for the 1st Congressional District with challenger Rich Ashu battling incumbent U.S. Rep. Frank Ginta with 31% of the participants reporting. Ginta had 47% of the vote compared to 45% for Ashu. Lawrence leads Flanagan in early returns in 2nd District. In early returns, former State Rep. Jim Lawrence took a lead over State Rep. Jack Flanagan in the race for the Republican nomination in the 2nd Congressional District, with 20% of participants reporting Lawrence led Flanagan 39 to 31%. Democrats press for federal investigation into Trump University. Democrats on the House Traditional Committee wrote to the Department of Justice today asking Attorney General Loretta Lynch to look into the Donald Trump Foundation. 
25000 donation to Florida Attorney General Pam Bondia. Traders watch to see if that's the air beginning to leak from bond bubble. With bond yield snapping back to June highs, traders are beginning to take notice and worry the markets are at a turning point where those rising yields could pressure stocks. Elizabeth Warren versus Wells Fargo. Senate hearing set for September 20th. Let's take a listen to this video from CNN. This was her first day. Geico. Call or click today to see how much you could save. This is a staggering fraud. And it is staggering both for how big it is and also for what it says about Wells Fargo. You know, look. Wells Fargo's turned around and said, hey, we're firing, you know, all the workers who were doing this, but not the management team. My view on this is one of two things is true. Either they knew, come on, this went on for years and they didn't smell anything in the air about fake accounts and generating all these fees off customers. Either they knew or they didn't know, in which case, how can you run a giant multinational bank? I mean, it's a bank, right? They're supposed to keep track of people's money, safety, security, and not know what more than 5,000 of your employees are doing. If they really didn't know, then that tells me this is a bank that is simply too big to manage. So is the fine enough? Does there need to be more? regulation, an investigation, uh, a congressional hearing? You know, this is the classic, so far as I can tell, and I only know what I've seen in the papers like everyone else, it's not like you need a new law. It's not like, oh, they explored some creative fraud that might, you know, slip between. No, this was illegal. This was wrong. This was flatly wrong, what they were doing. So it's not that we need more laws. What we need is aggressive enforcement of those laws. And, you know, it's the reminder the CFPB is a cop on the beat. It's someone on the side of all those people, all those customers who had checking accounts to try to level the playing field. But there is this larger question about the management of Wells Fargo. And this is something the bank regulators, the guys who are supposed to keep supervision over the too big to fail banks, really need to take a hard look at. Okay, and there you have it on that report. Now let's take a look at your weather right now. Get a live look on radar right now as you see on radar we have a few clouds and a few showers moving into New Hampshire for this evening now let's take a look at your weather on our weather system your weather on our weather system your wind speed peak is 5 miles per hour averages 1 Current is zero from the west. Your temperature is 66 degrees. Dew point is 55 degrees. Your forecast is sun slash rain. And your pressure is 29.92. Now let's take a look at your next seven day forecast. Here's a look at your next seven day forecast and here's a look at what your weather will be for tomorrow and that is it for your 9 p.m news and weather i hope you all have a great rest of your tuesday night and i'll see you back here tomorrow morning for riley's kingdom of weather and the riley king newscast goodbye everyone